It's a Thursday, and it's March 23rd, 2023. Your day with a podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily, also being brought to you by YDOT. Pacific Pieces, that's what uh, we're talking about here over the next several days. Not one particular storm in particular, but lots of little ones, which makes it a very tricky forecast, a variable one, and one where across the region, everyone's gonna experience a little bit of everything here in the coming days. We continue to see fragments of these strong Pacific storms passing through the region. We certainly saw that yesterday in some locations. We saw some heavy snow, we had a few thunderstorms, and we certainly saw a wide variety of weather on the interstates and roads and highways and over the mountain passes. Basically, it's going to be off and on scattered rain and snow showers on the plains, a couple of isolated thunderstorms and occasional mountain snow showers today and Friday. There's really nothing really big today and Friday, but there will be off and on showers passing on through all across the region. Scattered amongst that will be some moments of sunshine as well. Now we have that small storm we talked about yesterday that is going to focus on northern Wyoming, southern Montana, western South Dakota tomorrow night into Saturday. That region is going to see several inches of snow and uh, enough to cause some travel concerns and to add to the snowfall totals up there. We'll show you that here in a minute. And the active weather continues in the next week as the Pacific is just churning out one storm after another. And how cold has it been this month of March? Well, we'll give you some numbers that are quite startling when you start looking at the data to really see how cold it's been this month relative to average. Today's satellite photo shows a little disorganization. There's not as many clouds around, but uh, nonetheless, you can still see here in the Washington, Oregon area, California, Utah, there are little pieces of energy coming through the area that will continue to just be able to produce areas of shower activity and keep the atmosphere moist, unsettled and cool. We've got another low up here off the coast of Washington State. And if you back up and take a bigger perspective of the Pacific, look at this. Uh, just They just keep lining up. Here's another low here. We've got another low up behind it. We've got a good little swirl up here across uh, the Gulf of Alaska. But it's this North Pacific zone here that just continues to churn out storm systems. And this is extremely similar to what we saw late spring in 2011. And 2011 is a year we're gonna talk more about, especially when we take a closer look at snowpack figures, which we're gonna do either tomorrow or Monday because the snowpack numbers, and we'll show you a few today, are just quite amazing. Now let's talk about the month of March. This is the temperature anomaly for most of Canada and the lower 48 states since March 1st. You can see the green and the darker blue centered right over the northern plains and the central and northern Rockies and back into California. So you're talking about a pretty big deviation off the 30 year average and it's really been most of the western United States and this map looks very similar to how really the winter has gone since the start. But let's take a look at numbers and the numbers are quite impressive. If you look at where we are as of yesterday, the temperature in Fahrenheit the average temperature deviation is remarkable in some areas. Now, what do I mean by average temperature? So let's take, let's say the one day the high was 50 and the low was 30. You add those two together, that's 80. Divide that by two, that gives you the average temperature for the day, which would be 40. So you get an average temperature from taking the high and the low and putting it together. Then you take that and you compare it to what it was over that 30 year period period from 1991 to 2020. And when you start getting around a, a two or three degree deviation, either positive or minus, that is either a colder or warmer than normal month, a pretty, pretty good deviation. But when you start looking at some of these numbers, especially here on the right side, and especially considering that March is the time of year when your average temperature, especially this time of year, as you get to the end of the month, really begins to change every day, goes up because you're getting closer to the spring season, deeper into it. Look at Riverton and Lander. I mean, Riverton, 17 degrees below the average for the month so far, Lander 14. But even these, these fours and these, and these fives and these sevens and these eights and these tens, I mean, these, these are remarkably cold temperatures right here 
from a deviation standpoint. So we'll see where March ends up. I will tell you that, that we're not going to gain any ground here the way the rest of the month is looking. We'll show you that here in a minute. So this is obviously delaying any early snow melt. You know, a lot of people talked about the last three years, how the runoff was starting early, which was certainly true. Not this year. That's certainly the case. And this is going to keep a lot of lower elevation snowpack in place late into the season. And this is going to be something we have to watch and monitor because if we're not getting much melting now and it comes later and the snowpack is far above average, flooding concerns are certainly going to be a problem. Looking at snowpack updates, now this is as of yesterday morning. These numbers are going to go up after yesterday's storm system. But look at all the blue and look at all the green there, especially the light blues and the darker blues to see where these snowpacks are far above average. But really is quite amazing. Look at Arizona. These snowpacks are amazing. Arizona snowpack near Flagstaff, 470% of average. Look at New Mexico. New Mexico snowpacks are really, really high. Of course, this is all good news. This is water, uh, which is going to be going into lakes and reservoirs. But flooding is something we'll be talking about in the weeks ahead. Okay, here we go with the 500 millibar chart today. We've got this little piece of a low here. The low that actually came through yesterday is minored out up here, but you can see they're all lined up back here across the Gulf of Alaska. Over the next couple of days, this is what the precipitation looks like. Nothing terribly excessively heavy, but these little minor waves will come through, keeping snow showers going in the high country, scattered areas of rain and snow showers and isolated thunderstorms across the plains today, tonight, tomorrow, and tomorrow night. Now, as we get into Friday night and Saturday morning, this low right here, this fragment of the upper level lows pattern is coming in from the Pacific Northwest and tracking this way. And this is going to line up this axis right here of heavier snowfall for the northern counties of Wyoming into maybe parts of the Black Hills and up across southern areas of Montana. So back into Red Lodge, back up into Billings, into Cody, Powell, Grable, the northern Bighorn Basin areas and over to Sheridan and Buffalo. Uh, you're you're going to get several inches of a wet spring snow up there with some pretty cold temperatures. So livestock interest and travelers along Interstate 90, you've got some problems as we get into Friday night through Saturday with snow up there. Scattered areas of rain and snow showers will be developing elsewhere. And this axis right here is that low continues to work its way south. And there's what your snowfall is looking like for the region in that Friday night, Saturday time frame. And then closer to home, you can see it right there. And also, see this little patch along I-70 into Colorado? That'll be something that travelers will want to watch as well. You see how it's kind of coming into pieces and fragments, and there's gaps between these weather events? And that's what makes the weather forecast very tricky and very changeable. That's why you could be driving, and it's sunny. 50 miles later, you're in a snow squall. Look at these temperatures for Saturday. This is the temperature anomaly for Saturday afternoon across the interior west. Just really cold air coming in behind this system. And then if you look going forward, this is by Tuesday. There's a little gap right here. We might see as we get into late Monday and Tuesday, maybe one day of spring-like temperatures. But look at this. It looks like a bowling ball crashing right into California again. So they're going to have another really strong and intense storm come into Northern and Central California towards Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Then you could surmise what happens. Yep, it starts to move inland. So by mid to late next week, especially by next Thursday and Friday, this larger trough of low pressure is going to be a weather maker for the Central and Northern Rockies and the Plains. Whether or not it turns into a big storm or a fragmented storm, don't know yet. But the, the overall writing message here is we'll just continue with this very active and colder than average pattern. The 10 day temperature anomaly, if you add it all up, looks like this. Yes, this takes us all the way into April Fool's Day, the first day of April. So if you want anything resembling spring, you need to get on a plane or get in your car and head south because nothing up north or nothing in the west remotely looks anything like an early spring pattern. Have yourself a good Thursday. See you tomorrow.